In this tutorial, we're going to look at the inversion of 3D resistivity data collected on a lab column. We're using this example to show how we can read in a mesh that was created prior to working with ResiPy. The problem is shown in figure 5.18 in chapter 5 and consists of a column 50 centimeters tall, 6.4 centimeters diameter, that consists of eight rings of electrodes, each ring containing 12 electrodes. The experiment consists of a column filled with water in which a plastic pipe was inserted part way through the column. And we're using this as a just an illustration of the resolution that we might be able to expect from imaging this resistive target within a conductive body. We start by selecting 3D and then import data and the file is protocol.dat which we read in and we see that the plot defaults to a apparent resistivity plot which doesn't make sense here because ResiPy doesn't know the geometry of the problem that we're working with so we can skip this and move to just read the electrode coordinates import the CSV file and the electrode.csv contains the XYZ coordinates and the labels for each electrode we can then go to mesh and rather than generating a mesh what we're going to do is import a custom mesh. So we select this file, mesh3d.dat, which is a standard form, format for R3T. Select this file, and ResiPy will load this and plot this file, this mesh. And it'll allow us just to check that the mesh is okay. We can see it consists of, of triangular prisms. So not tetrahedra in this case, but triangular prisms, which was used just because it's sometimes easier to work with column data in this format, because we can generate a two-dimensional triangular mesh and then extend that in the, ver in the vertical uh, to create this triangular prism mesh. So now we go to inverse settings and I'm going to set the A weight to 0 0.01, that's the offset error, and the B weight to 0 0.05. And these are based on measurements that we've done to look at the errors in the data using reciprocity checks. I can then run to inversion. So we now select invert. and then R3T is act activated. The first stage of R3T is to read in files and set up the problem. We'll sometimes find that when we run large problems with R3T or other codes that ResiPy will complain it's not responding. This is not a problem it just means that R3T is, in this case, is tied up with some computation and ResiPy is trying to communicate with it. So there will be periods when we'll see a not responding flag at the top of the screen. So now ResiPy has received some information from R3T and the log will continue. ResiPy will display the progress of the inversion and when convergence is achieved i.e. we've reached a misfit of one then we'll have a screen showing the output from the inversion So now the problem has converged, we can see the image of the column 
showing resistivity variation where we can just see the resistive feature shown at the top of the column um, let's change the color scale here and that just highlights it a little bit better we can see some vertical features around the electrodes this is a, a result of the partly because of the non-point electrodes in the real situation but also because we've got quite long quite tall triangular prisms here and they tend to exaggerate this this vertical striping I can uh, look at cross sections through here first of all if I just plot the grid and then that will allow me to see the coordinates along here so if I select Z at point 4 and look at a, a horizontal cross section I can see the the um, uh, target quite clearly and if I plot x0 y0 to get some vertical sections through here then I can also see now cutting through the image the location of this resistive zone I can remove this and then apply uh, a, uh, a threshold on here um, and I can also select a isosurface so let's say go for a hundred ohm meter I log of two and plot the isosurface then now I can I can see the location of this of this target very clearly and I can manipulate this image rotate through this image and do some fairly basic viewing of the image but what's useful to do is to save this select save data save it to a folder and that will allow me to work with a VTK file afterwards for example loading into Paraview to um, to do a little bit more in terms of manipulation of the image if I select post processing then I can look at the normalized inversion errors and I can see how well this fits I should be getting a a mean normalized error of zero and 99% should lie between plus or minus three and these are shown by these red uh, lines here I can see that I've got a few points that fit out lie outside this and so it could be useful in this particular case to go and look at see which these what these measurements are and consider filtering those measurements out and rerunning an inversion um, and that might strip out some anomalous readings some uh, readings that have particularly high errors